the Great Pyramid. Dun, dun, dun. So we talked about at the beginning of the episode how if we were to travel to an extraterrestrial planet. Yes. The moon, the Mars, or an asteroid. Uh-huh. The first, thing, Atlas. the first thing that we would do is build in situ chemical manufacturing and mining facilities. This right. is a paper talking about the proposed silicate sulfuric acid process, mineral processing for in situ resource utilization. That's been the whole topic of this overall podcast is utilizing in situ natural resources for producing chemicals for metallurgical applications. What does in situ mean? On site. Okay. So, so instead of paper, the abstract is volatile elements and compounds found in extraterrestrial environments are often the target of in situ resource utilization studies. Um, and long story short, this is saying that we would want to build a facility on an extraterrestrial planet that could exploit sulfur resources Whoa. for the extraction of iron metal and the production of metals on site. This is exactly what the Great Who, Pyramid was designed to do. This was from what? Okay. Uh, Curtin University? Correct. Yeah. The Space, Space Science, and Science and Technology, and Technology Center. Center. Australia. So this is just kind of entertaining the idea that, again, I don't buy into this, that the Great Pyramid or any of the pyramids or any of these ancient structures around the world were built by extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. But if we were traveling to an extraterrestrial planet. We're already hypothesizing how we would uh, extract minerals and create. Correct. And manufacture chemicals. By building chemicals. an in situ sulfuric acid manufacturing facility Holy that utilizes God. extraterrestrial sulfur sources for these metallurgical processes. And this is almost verbatim exactly what was happening inside of the Great Pyramid, where the Great Pyramid is built on top of a local source of sulfur for creating sulfuric acid for mining and metallurgical processes. See, that's all you had to do to sell it. Just a little dab. This right here. Just a little cherry. A little, a little dab of little, aliens little in there. A little alien cherry yeah, on top. Yeah, a little, little tease. Yeah. So again, I don't, I don't buy into that. Right. I think that these were built by human beings, but I think it's fun to entertain totally. these alternative hypotheses because again, there's a lot of rhetoric and mythology about extraterrestrials coming to the planet for mining gold, specifically with the Anunnaki topic. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't really buy into that. I think these are made by humans, but if humans were going to other planets, you don't build, bring the stuff, no. you build it on site. Right. That's exactly what we would do, creating sulfuric acid for metallurgy and mining applications. Okay, so let's dive into the function of the Great Pyramid. Wow. We're gonna walk through the function of each chamber individually, and I'll also discuss what is really below the Giza Plateau, a natural cave and tunnel system and hydrothermal vents that created these iron oxide deposits and the source of the hydrogen sulfide that was utilized within the Great Pyramid to produce sulfuric acid. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Sorry, why would you create something. sulfuric acid? Mostly for metallurgical processes. Right. So you can also make fertilizers, petroleum refining, metal processing. All of these applications that we've talked about across the board apply to sulfuric acid as a product of the Great Pyramid. Again, the product is not electricity. The product is chemicals. Sulfuric acid specifically inside the Great Pyramid that can be utilized for processes like leach mining and the separation of metals. So this is a diagram from a paper that I'm about to present showing the natural cave and tunnel system below the Giza Plateau, below the Giza pyramids, that also includes, you see these big vertical features? Yeah. These hydrothermal vents that are from the ancient Tethys seafloor. Hydrothermal vents can extend into the bedrock for kilometers. They are extremely deep vertical features that are a natural part of the limestone bedrock of the Giza Plateau that are a part of this ancient seafloor. These hydrothermal processes are what created the iron veins on the Giza Plateau. These deposits of iron metal were created by hydrothermal vents on the ancient Tethys seafloor that created the limestone bedrock of the Giza Plateau. Whoa. Okay. Sulfur. 
Directly under the pyramids? Directly below the pyramids. And I'm going to show you a paper that corroborates that. Talking about hydrothermal vent systems. Did you show this to your boy? Who? The Filippo guy? Oh, no. So they don't... They. I don't know that they know about this yet okay. because this is a fairly recent discovery for oh, me. Man. I found this paper probably within the past six months. Okay. My original hypothesis for the so source of the sulfur is basically what we're talking about here is sulfur mining okay. in Egypt. They were mining sulfur in ancient Egypt. That's a well-documented process. And they were using the sulfur for a variety of applications from cosmetics to pharmaceuticals. And they know where they were mining these things. For example, Gebel El Zait, as I mentioned before, is one of the mining locations um, no, that's Wad and El Faras, which is kind of close to here. Mm -hmm. But they had specific mining areas uh, close to the um, Suez Canal that were the mining locations for native sulfur, like elemental okay. sulfur. Sure. It wasn't until much later that I found this paper that supported the idea that there were actually sulfide mm -hmm. deposits directly below the Giza pyramids. Sulfide deposits. Yeah, specifically hydrogen sulfide gas. Now, they could have been extracting mm. this sulfur using a process that is reminiscent of our modern day frash process, which is, again, pumping hot water into these sulfide deposits, mm -hmm. very similar to the process that was utilized in the step pyramid for the extraction of bedrock methane. Okay, so raw materials. We have talked about the Egyptian pyramids harnessing raw materials and utilizing those raw materials that are abundant resources of the earth for a variety of different manufacturing processes. So we have sulfur, air, water, and methane. Again, step pyramid, extracting bedrock deposits of methane. The serapium, converting air into hydrogen and oxygen. The red pyramid, converting hydrogen and nitrogen into ammonia. And the great pyramid, transforming sulfur and air into sulfur trioxide and dilute sulfuric acid. Okay, so the configuration of the King's Chamber. There is a shaft system below the King's Chamber. Shout out Matt Simpson from Ancient Architects. Recently did a video about this showing the shaft system below the King's Chamber that is the inlet for the hydrogen sulfide gas that was being introduced into the reactor. Same thing as we had here in the bottom of the final reaction chamber of the Red Pyramid the final synthesis chamber, there was a shaft. That's why they excavated out all the stone from inside of the final synthesis chamber of the red pyramid. They were following that shaft. And what went in that shaft? It's the extraction of the product. The aqueous ammonia was so being they suck extracted it out, there at the end. out of that shaft system. I see. So there is a hole, a shaft right. in the bottom I of the king's Chris chamber. Dunn telling me about this. Yeah, yeah. They excavated down in this thing and they just found that it was filled with rubble and debris. So they abandoned the excavation. Mm -hmm. This is the inlet shaft that was being utilized to introduce the hydrogen sulfide, not hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide. The hydrogen sulfide is first converted into sulfur dioxide in a series of steps that happened in the satellite pyramids. Again, I'm going to breeze through this okay. very quickly. For, where's, the, where's the inlet shaft here? So let me show you. This is you. the king's chamber. Yeah. Looking at right here. Okay. So here is a picture you see on the right. Where those blocks are yeah those are blocks that have been removed from the floor okay and i'll show you the configuration so this is a modern picture that i took during one of my recent private special permissions into the great pyramid the Looks shaft like this room the shaft is now covered up with a modern metal grate so you can't see the shaft anymore and those blocks that were originally in there have been removed those red granite okay. slabs that were a part of the floor are no longer in the structure okay and they've covered it up with on the right there correct yeah you see that metal grate yep that flat piece of metal yes yeah they've painted it to make it look like red granite but that's where the shaft is going down into the bottom of the king's chamber okay here you can see it on this diagram you see that shaft next to the container that's the shaft that they excavated no where so you see the sarcophagus the container oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that hole I see. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. so that's the inlet shaft that was used something to, came in there correct the inlet shaft that was introducing sulfur dioxide into the king's chamber so the hydrogen sulfide itself comes from below the giza plateau hydrogen sulfide is what's naturally under the giza plateau. correct okay the hydrogen sulfide is converted into sulfur dioxide in a three-step series within the satellite pyramids okay that sulfur dioxide is then introduced into the 
furnace chamber, the king's chamber, through this inlet shaft. Where's the other end of that inlet shaft? What do you mean? Where's it comes the other... from below the structure, underneath the structure. It comes from in the ground. Connecting the satellite pyramids into the king's chamber. No way. We 100%. know this? So again, they excavated down into this hole that you can see there. Yeah. The hole was already there during the modern archaeological excavations. The hole was already there. They excavated further following the hole mm -hmm. and all they found was that it was filled in with sand and debris. Okay. So they abandoned it. Okay. So that inlet shaft was already clogged with material. Okay. From thousands of years of material building up inside of the structure. Same thing as the King's Chamber air shafts were clogged with material. And they had to clear out that material from inside of the air shafts mm -hmm. to remove all of that. And that's when air started flowing into the King's Chamber air shafts. So this is just a picture looking down into this hole that you can see here on the diagram. And those speckled blocks are the pieces of the floor that were removed during the excavation to follow that hole. You can see those pieces would have fit, fit here and here. And that red square is the original hole in the floor, the okay. inlet shaft that was used to introduce the sulfur dioxide into the king's chamber. So did they break up the pieces of rock and, and remove them? Nobody knows what happened to it, but they're no longer in there. And how do we know for sure that that hole connects to the other pyramids? It, we don't know for sure. Okay, this is just a hypothesis. Hypothesis, correct. Got it. Yeah, so when it comes to my hypotheses on the various Egyptian pyramids, I try to do as little speculation as possible mm -hmm. for things like the extraction shaft of the Red Pyramid. There has to be a reason that they excavated the entire floor of the final synthesis chamber and removed all of that material. There's a giant pit in there now. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what the original configuration of this final synthesis chamber was. Right. So in my opinion, mm -hmm. they were following the extraction shaft and they excavated all of that material in search of the pharaonic burial and treasure. Right. But all they found, again, was a pit that was filled in with material. Got it. So I it see. was abandoned. I see. This is, again, my hypothesis about this shaft below the king's chamber which went down further, but it was filled with material already. Got it. So they never excavated it any further. 